I'm a violent motherfucker. I'm the most violent lightweight on this planet. Body kick. Oh! Out. Big right from Oliveira. They may both have to tap out. There's the tap. Wow. Charles Oliveira oh. does it again. Eu sou o cara. Eles falam, eles falam, falam, eu vou aqui fácil. Charles Oliveira versus Justin Gaethje, the ultimate fight breakdown. The most exciting fighter on the UFC roster. A man who throws caution to the wind for the fans' entertainment. Never taking a step back, faces the fighter with the most UFC finishes in UFC's history. A man who bounced back from losses in his career to claim the UFC title. That's right, we're talking about Justin, the highlight Gaethje, challenging Charles the Bronx Oliveira for the lightweight title at UFC 74. Who's next? This is definitely a matchup to look forward to, and we here at Athlete Central are here to tell you everything you need to know about it in this Ultimate Fight Breakdown. 4. Let's start off with the challenger, Justin Gaethje. When the UFC signed him from the World Series of Fighting, he was their lightweight champion, meaning he got thrown straight into the deep end in his UFC debut. Facing 5th rank Michael Johnson in the main event of the tough finale, where he was actually a plus-125 underdog. In a barn burner of a fight where both men were barely standing by the end of the second round, they entertained the crowd by giving it all in their punches and eventually Gaethje was the last man standing, knocking him out at the end of the second round. He then had a couple of other bangers with Eddie Alvarez and Dustin Poirier, but unfortunately for him, came up short despite doing a lot of damage to both of his opponents. Eddie's face, after all, was unrecognizable and Dustin couldn't walk properly for a while after those vicious leg kicks. After these back-to-back -back losses, Trevor Whitman, Gaethje's coach, recalls that Justin talked to him after the defeats asking to change their objective. Before, Gaethje wanted to be the most entertaining fighter on the roster, but now he wants to be the champion. And that showed in his next three performances, three first-round knockouts against James Vick, Edson Barboza, and Donald Cerrone. Gaethje was more calculated in these performances and used his power and explosiveness brilliantly. When Khabib could not travel to his fight against Tony Ferguson at UFC 249, the only logical opponent for Tony for an interim belt was Justin Gaethje. He was the plus 180 underdog in the bout. Despite this, he dominated the entire fight except for a good moment when Tony at the end of the second round landed a nice uppercut to drop Gaethje. Just listen to these bombs, Justin landed on Tony. Look at that. Oh, oh my goodness. Man. Herb Dean stopped the fight with a minute left to go in the fifth, but he thought Tony had enough and honestly can't blame him for doing so. The next fight was the title unification bout against Khabib, Nermano Magedov. He did quite well in the first round of the fight. Two of the three judges thought he won it. However, Khabib took him down and submitted him with a slick triangle choke, Khabib style. After the fact, Khabib said Gaethje is the hardest puncher and kicker he has ever faced. You know, th th this guy, he, he hit like truck, you know, like nobody hit harder than me, like harder than Justin Gaethje. His last fight was the UFC's fight of the year for 2021 against Michael Chandler, who got the better of Justin in the first round. Gaethje came back to score a knockdown in round two and win it decisively, with some people even scoring it a 10-8 round. Gaethje won the third round in the most entertaining fight of the year to secure his title shot against Charles Oliveira, which is why we're talking about this breakdown. Speaking of the Brazilian, let's take a look at the, his 10-fight win streak. After going on a rough patch of two victories and four losses, which included two guillotine choke defeats, it seems as though as though Bronx was not top 15 caliber. Oliveira was determined to prove the critics wrong and went on a four-fight win streak against veterans Clay Guida and Jim Miller, as well as young blood like Christos Diagos and David Timir to get himself back into the ranking. All four victories were submission finishes with the first two rounds, which is awesome. He then got two KO victories over Nick Lenz and Jared Gordon to further solidify himself as a contender. Critics said that his six-fight win streak was not as impressive, though, given the fact that he was a favorite against every single one of those opponents. The critics' questions would be answered in his fight against the then number eight Kevin Lee. Del Bronx showed very impressive striking and obviously hit his strong suit, grappling in the fight, stuffing Lee's takedowns effectively and tiring him out with relentless pressure. When Lee tried to shoot for another takedown at the start of the third round, Oliveira secured a guillotine choke and finished the fight impressively. His last three opponents are all dudes that Gaethje has faced, Tony Ferguson, Michael Chandler, and Dustin Poirier. Let's start off with the fight that got him the title shot, Tony. 
That was an extremely sad fight to watch. Tony got dominated in the stand-up against Gaethje, and this time around, Oliveira was toying with him on the ground, dominating the fight from start to finish. At one point, the Bronx got him in an arm bar so tight that it looked like Tony's arm might have snapped at any second, but El Kakui, crazy El Kakui, refused to tap and got saved by the bell. Charles was so good that night that there's an argument to be made for all those rounds being scored as 10 to 8. His vacant title fight against Michael Chandler was a roller coaster. After a lot of back and forth and big shots in the first, towards the end of the round, it seemed as though Michael Chandler was going to get the finish, but Oliveira survived until the bell. When the second round started, though, both fighters stepped into the middle of the cage, and only 19 seconds in, Oliveira got the finish after dropping Chandler with a check left hook and finished him with some ground and pound. Fun fact, Oliveira has always had a tendency to bounce back. He had a really tough upbringing in the favelas in Brazil. He actually used to make cheese salads from his mom's trailer to make ends meet. He actually made a few friends who trained in jiu-jitsu and got into the sport. And it's weird how random things can come back and be so important later on in your life. His last fight was against Dustin Poirier in his first title defense. The challenger beat Oliveira in the first round, using his striking effectively and not allowing Charles to execute his game plan. The second round was different, very different. Oliveira dominated Poirier and two judges even scored it a 10-8 round for Charles. A minute into the third round, Oliveira secured a rear naked choke to secure the victory and he defended his belt. Attributes both fighters are in the prime of their careers. Oliveira is 32 and Gaethje is 33. They still have about 5-6 to six years at the very top of the sport, although considering the damage Gaethje has taken from his, you know, entertaining fights throughout the years, it's unlikely he'll stick around in the sport that long. Justin's 5'11", one inch taller than Oliveira who stands at 5'10", but the Brazilian has a massive 4 inch reach advantage over Justin whose reach is 70 inches while Charles is 74. Striking Logistically, fans of the sport would assume that Gaethje has better striking and Oliveira has better grappling. Well, let's see if the stats back that up. Gaethje lands an astounding 7.5 significant strikes per minute, which is almost double Oliveira's 3.44. This comes from his hectic style, which leads to all of his fights becoming barn burners. Despite the volume at which he throws these strikes, his accuracy is astounding, standing at a solid 60%, 7% higher than Oliveira's 53%. Oliveira's relatively low percentage makes sense as his striking wasn't as good as it is now early on in his career. Keep in mind Charles has been in the UFC since 2010 when he was 12-0. He's developed a lot over the 29 fights he's had since. In terms of strikes absorbed, Oliveira is head and shoulders clear of Gaethje. He absorbs 3.13 significant strikes per minute, while Gaethje's reckless fights have landed him at a statistic of 7.18 absorbed per minute. Despite this, his defense is 55%, surprisingly higher than Oliveira's 52%. This shows that even though he puts himself in these dangerous positions and chooses to entertain the fans, he's still very skilled and technical. In terms of knockout power, a whopping 18 out of 23 victories for Gaethje have come via TKO or KO, and five of his six UFC wins have come in that fashion as well. Nine of Oliveira's 32 wins have come in that fashion. Grappling. In terms of grappling, there are a lot of talks that's been made of Gaethje being a good college wrestler, but we've never seen this in practice in the octagon. This was kind of like the rhetoric before the Khabib fight, but again, we didn't see it. He has not attempted a single takedown during his UFC career. Joe Bronx averages 2.50 takedowns per 15 minutes, meaning he likes to get the fight to the ground almost once per round with an accuracy of 41%. In terms of defense percentage, Gaethje is actually way better at defending takedowns. His defense rate is 73% while Oliveira's is 57%. Part of this could be the fact that Oliveira doesn't mind being taken down. In fact, that's where he's most comfortable. In terms of submissions, it's a similar story to the takedowns for Gaethje. He hasn't attempted a single one throw at his time in UFC. Oliveira attempts 2.8 per 15 minutes. He holds the record for most submission wins in the UFC, and 20 of his 32 wins have come by a submission. Prediction Looking at the fight, there are a lot of scenarios that could play out. We all know that Gaethje's weaknesses are on the ground, and that's where Oliveira's strengths are. If the Bronx can get the fight down to the ground, then it'll be a long night for Justin. He could threaten him with a plethora of submission. If the fight stays standing, however, we would favor Gaethje. 
Oliveira likes to use a kind of wide stance, which is perfect for the vicious leg kicks Gaethje has in his arsenal. Take a look at these photos of Dustin Poirier's leg after their fight. Dustin hits hard and half of Oliveira's losses have come via KO slash TKO. His hooks and uppercuts will be very dangerous and Oliveira's chin will be definitely tested in this one. However, don't sleep on Oliveira if he stays on the feet. He showed that he can hang with a heavy hitter like Michael Chandler and come back to KO him in the second. Since Oliveira has more methods of victory, the bookmakers have made him a minus 155 favorite with Gaethje being a plus 135 underdog. Thanks so much for watching today's video, guys. Who would you guys put your money on? Let us know your thoughts down below. And make sure to like and subscribe to never miss an Athlete Central video. Catch you on the next one.